Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brandon Bonifer, and you are watching a special program that we're bringing you from Marshfield, Wisconsin. We are at a Monarch Way Station, and today we're going to learn a little bit more about the Monarch Butterfly, their process, how they migrate, but more importantly, we're going to learn about a family that's making this happen here right in Marshfield. So stay tuned. I am here with Jim and Melissa, and we're going to learn a little bit more about what they're doing here in Marshfield. Jim, tell me when you started this. Well, we started this probably about three years ago. Melissa's sister here kind of got us into it. She gave us a couple of monarchs to raise, and uh, after that we decided that we wanted to continue doing that. Um, then we started learning more that, about them being more endangered and, and, you know, the habitats. Now let's take a couple steps back, and I see we have a sign here. It says Monarch Way Station. What is a Monarch Way Station, and how do you get that uh, sign here at your location? Uh, Monarch Way Station is basically um, a site that has nectar, plant, nectar plants, flowers, um, milkweed is a big one, and um, shelter, which could be, well, it could be tree stumps, um, shrubs, anything like that, that the butterflies can feel comfortable. And, and the biggest one is pesticide-free. So you mentioned earlier in a program that the Monarch Butterfly is endangered. Why is it endangered, and what can others do to help uh, get involved in projects like what you're doing here? Um, urban development um, is one of the reasons, uh, lack of milkweed. Um, around here, that's not so much the case, but pesticides and predators. So you said that one of the most fun things that makes it a family program or a family project is the fact you're able to go out and look for the eggs or look for the caterpillars. What does that consist of? Um, basically going and finding um, milkweed plants and searching. Um, if you find one caterpillar, you're probably going to find more. Are you looking for the caterpillar or are you looking for the eggs? Uh, first, intentionally, we look for the caterpillar. Um, we look for the chewed up milkweed leaves, and if we find a caterpillar, we find one. Um, and then it just kind of, if you find eggs, you find eggs. And eggs are a little more difficult, a little more advanced to find. So here at our house, it looks like you have a, a couple different... Uh, tank set up. Can you take me through each one of the tanks and tell me what's going on starting uh, with probably the, the first one in front of us? Um, well first I, I, I separate the eggs into this, these small containers and wait for them to hatch. Every day I check them um, and once we start seeing the tiny caterpillar out they go they get more leaves and they usually get you know, third instar so which is you know how is how big they get and then I put them in this tank here, which has milkweed and water. And there they're able to kind of roam around, eat, and I don't have to really worry about the milkweed leaves drying out or anything like that. And once they get to another stage, they go to another tank, and those milkweeds are hung, and those are big enough caterpillars where they'll eat and eat and eat, and they'll chow the milkweed down to the stem. So probably one of the biggest things you need is milkweed. How are you getting your milkweed? Find it in ditches, fields, um, you know, anywhere where you know that pesticides probably aren't going to be sprayed, um, anywhere where it's safe, but just about any ditch around here has milkweed in it. So probably one of the coolest things when I came into your house here is this top tank. Tell me what's going on in this one. These are the chrysalis, um, where the chrysalises are, are staged, basically. Um, they go from from going up to the form their chrysalis, and then I'll take them out and put them in this tank here. And here they'll sit until they are they enclose and they turn into butterflies. And then I will take them out, find out if they're male or female, and we put them into the net here, and then we'll go and release them. I don't know. If it looks like you have different pieces of wood planks. Does that transfer from one tank to the next in the process? Yes, they do. Once, um, once that tank is done and they are all chrysalises, they will get moved to either this tank or a, a larger st storage tank until, until I know they're going to come out and then they'll go into this one here so we can watch them and keep an eye on them. Now I see here we have a couple of them that must have came out earlier today or at some point. They just seem to be very, very still, like almost like they're sleeping versus the ones we see here look pretty active. 
why is uh what makes these guys just kind of hanging out i guess well these are hanging out because they just came out and they're still wet they're drying their wings kind of gathering themselves together they got to uh zip their proboscis which is the straw they use to sip the nectar and um they can usually be held for about 24 hours until they really start getting itchy to get out and find flowers so the last one here must be the final product these, these ones have been in here since yesterday. We had some bad weather, so we didn't really want to release them. And it looks like now they are, they're are—they're ready to go. They're ready to fly. As soon as we open that, they're probably going to take off. Now you said you had about 400 so far that you're thinking that you're going to release this year in 2018. Where are you releasing all of them? Um, we go to various parks, um, different places, sometimes in our backyard, our front yard. Um, sometimes we have other people who want to release them release them but Hamas Park is a big one that's a that's a nature preserve that's one of our favorites um Mill Creek Gardens we like to go out there and um just wherever we can kind of think of that we know has wildflowers or places where butterflies might want to be released so I uh, is there people that you know frequent the parks that see you guys releasing butterflies we, we often, if there's people at the park, especially with kids, we'll ask them if they want to release butterflies. A lot of them will see us come with the, with the net, and they'll even come over and say, is it okay that we release them? And we let them because, I mean, how many people can say that they've held butterflies or released butterflies? We like to let little kids let them go. The males are getting ready to migrate first, though. Yeah, we are kind of getting to the end of our summer here. I mean... What does it mean for you to know that you're releasing these butterflies and towards August and September, those are butterflies that are migrating. Where are they going? What is their purpose? And when do you expect them to come back? Well, they're, they're, um, they're getting ready to go down to Mexico. They usually they travel to Mexico for the winter. They overwinter there. Um, there they'll hibernate. And then I, um, February, March, I believe, they start getting out of hibernation. And then they will start mating and coming back up and... April, well, May, June, somewhere in there. Now, now, when they come back from the migration, are they coming back to Marshfield or is this basically to the Midwest? Midwest, basically. Um, we don't tag them yet. There is a way of tagging them, but we don't tag them yet. Um, so they, they fly pretty much anywhere Midwest. And if they happen to land around here and, and we get eggs and we get caterpillars, which there's tons of milkweed, and we usually do, so... So it sounded like you guys are releasing more than you ever have before. Is that because you're spending more time doing it or out hunting and searching more? Or is that because over the years you've noticed a boost in the population? Well, I've noticed this year, We, like I said, we've raised our first 40. And then after that, it was like those must have mated and, and just laid eggs in everywhere. And now I've, I'm finding them places I didn't in years past. So up above, you're going to see a link to a new Facebook page. Please, if this interests you, if you want to follow them and see the journey, share it with your friends, your family, your kids. Click the link above, follow them on Facebook, and you're going to see the process as they continue to do this. Thank you again for letting me come in your home. I know our audience enjoys it. Guys, if you like what we're doing, hit the like button above, subscribe to our page. I'm Brandon Bonifer, and we'll see you guys next time.